Shalom everyone, Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan in the reserves here for a daily update. We are one week and perhaps 10 minutes after this horrible war started with the atrocities perpetrated by Hamas, which resulted in more than 1,300 dead Israelis and 3,000 wounded. I won't go over all of the events of the last week. There is simply too much to say, but I will give a daily update of, about the current situation on the ground and where things may develop from here. As usual, we have the map behind us, and I would like to focus on the situation in Gaza City and northern Gaza. Gaza City is where the focus and the hub of Hamas activities are. That is where most of the commanders are. Most of their infrastructure and their ability to continue to operate against the IDF is focused in Gaza City, also the largest center of population. Yesterday, we issued a demand for Palestinian civilians in Gaza, in the northern part of the Gaza uh, Strip, Gaza City uh, and its surroundings, to move north, to move south, and evacuate themselves to this place here, the Gaza River, in order to uh, be safer and in order to not be in an area where we are going to enhance our military operations. We use the words, the words significant military operations. We do this, we advertised our intentions in advance, not because it has any military logic, it doesn't, because we want civilians not to be affected by the war. We didn't put those civilians there, they are not our enemy, we are not trying to kill or injure any civilians. We are fighting against Hamas. That needs to be abundantly clear. We are fighting and targeting Hamas and its military infrastructure, wherever it is. That's where we target it, and we have targeted around the Gaza Strip and in the northern part of the Gaza Strip. Uh, we have seen a significant movement of Palestinian civilians towards the south, and that's all over the news. Uh, we have seen uh, people listening to our warning, understanding that they are doing the clever thing, moving out of a dangerous area, and that they are doing the right thing for their family and their own safety. Extremely sad and worrying to see is the fact that Hamas actively undermines and has stopped, tried to stop Palestinian civilians from evacuating that area both via messages and also checkpoints and stops on the ground, according to reports made by international media. That, I think, is the peak of cynicism, the fact that Hamas not only holds civilians as their human shields, not only does Hamas embed itself within the civilian population and, you, and, and tries to um, um, use them as a disguise, not only do they hide their infrastructure underneath, uh, the civilian infrastructure, not all of those things combined. And also when we ask the civilians to uh, evacuate, Hamas tries to stop it. Hopefully, Palestinians will do that as fast as possible, vacate the area for their own security and return only when we tell them that it is safe to do so. Around the Gaza Strip, as uh, have been for many days are Israeli reserve soldiers in formation that are getting ready for, for the next stage of operations. They are all around the Gaza Strip, in the south, in the center, and in the north, and they are preparing themselves for whatever target they will get, whatever task. As I've said before, our aim is very clear. The end state of this war is that we will dismantle Hamas and its military capabilities and fundamentally change the situation so that Hamas never again has the ability to inflict any damage on Israeli civilians or soldiers. Moving on to the northern front, after a few days that were a little bit quieter, I'd like to focus on an event that happened in the western sector of the border, in this area here. Hezbollah fighters fired an anti-tank missile towards Israeli troops. There was a short battle and uh, the situation eventually, eventually calmed down. Afterwards, Hezbollah sent drones into Israel and also fired surface-to-air missiles against an Israeli aircraft. 
All of those two attempts were successfully intercepted by the IDF, but the situation on the northern border remains very tense and we are monitoring the activities of Hezbollah very closely with additional enhanced capabilities in the north prepared for any eventuality that may, uh, that may happen. As we mark a week after this bloody attack against Israel, I draw faith and strength from the level of unity in Israel and from the level of cohesion and battle readiness of Israeli soldiers. And there's ample evidence of that out on social media and in the regular media. And I think that is very, very important to see. A few issues that have been spoken about in the media that I wish to clarify and emphasize and to make abundantly clear. The Palestinian civilians in Gaza are not our enemies. We don't assess them as such and we don't target them as such. If they were, obviously the situation in Gaza would be totally different. We are trying to do the right thing. We are trying to evacuate civilians in order to minimize the risk for them. And uh, it is extremely sad and regrettable that so many media outlets are focusing on our actions instead of putting the responsibility on the entity that governs the Gaza Strip, and that is Hamas. They are the ones who initiated this war. They are the ones who targeted our civilians. They are the ones who continue to fire rockets at Israel. And by the way, as uh, Israelis were sitting down or perhaps rising from their Shabbat dinner, sirens sounded in Tel Aviv and in central Israel, and they have been sounding in southern Israel uh, over uh, the entire day. Rockets are still being fired at Israel. So all of this is Hamas. Hamas is doing. We are responding to the situation. We are trying not to um, strike civilians or their infrastructure. And I think that should be recognized and respected in the world and not criticized. Last thing, positive developments and very, very important. We've had high level visits by various uh, ministers of foreign affairs. On the picture you can see, on the picture you can see uh, the uh, top picture, Ursula von der Leyen from the European Commission, of course, Lloyd Austin, Secretary of Defense from the US, together with our Deputy Chief of Staff, General Baram, and uh, with the uh, Ministry of Defense, and uh, the Federal Minister of Foreign Affairs of Germany. Uh, in addition to them, the Foreign Minister, the Italian Foreign Minister, also visited the battle sites. And uh, here you can see additional pictures of uh, uh, the, two, uh, uh, the two visits. The point being that European and American leaders are sending a clear message that they stand by Israel, that they understand that this act of atrocity against Israel is not another round of conflict and that they fully support our right to defend ourselves against these monsters. I think that's a very monstrous, on my word, that's not what the minister said, but that is the essence of uh, what we're saying here. Uh, and I think that is incredibly, very, very important that the world remembers. We're one week after the atrocity. Remember how it started. We will likely evolve into additional significant combat uh, operations. When we do so, remember how this started not by our initiative, not by our choice, and definitely not by the targets that we uh, chose to make. All of this is Hamas making. I hope you find this useful.